Welcome to the Helix Hour, brought to you in part by Design39 Media. Visit design39media.com for all your website, photography, and video production needs. Microphones for the Helix Hour are provided by Rode Microphones. Now, let's talk some Helix. Hey everyone, happy Sunday to you all. Welcome to the return, the premiere of season two of the Helix Hour. It's nice to be back. I hate time off. And I'm back today with a very, very, very special guest, internationally acclaimed, Grammy-nominated electric acoustic cellist, Tina Guo. Tina, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me, Eric. Hi, guys. It's a pleasure to have you, for sure. And uh, there's been a lot of praise I've heard from the diff different camps, from Line 6 and a lot of other of my musician friends out there. Uh, they were very excited uh, when they heard that uh, I was having on the show, and I think we're in for a real treat today. And it goes to show us, too, which we're going to talk about a lot today, that Helix is such a versatile instrument, and I, and I do I do say an instrument because it has its own voice, that it can be used from country to rock to jazz and something fused into classical and metal uh, l like you're doing today with instruments that probably the average person would not expect. It's uh, I think it's going to be a fun discussion. Yay, I hope so. Thank you. It's good. So, so what have you been up to as of late? Well, uh, this morning I woke up. I had... Three cups of coffee already. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> I was playing around with, uh, of course, my Helix uh, LT and my one of my acoustic cellos, kind of like preparing for hopefully something n somewhat nice that's going to happen today. Um, and I'm about to leave for a short tour next week. Uh, I'm doing a couple events for Bentley up at the uh, Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly because um, I'm not fancy enough to really know how it's pronounced. But <laughs> we're doing that. And then I'm also playing in Prague uh, in the Czech Republic at a film music festival with this group. And it's called Vivaldiano. And they take music, obviously, by Vivaldi. And they kind of like, it's not, it's not really metal or rock. It's more... I don't know, Euro pop. Hopefully, you don't get mad at me for saying that, but like kind of Euro pop disco okay. type with Vivaldi. So that'll be, you know, that'll be fun. Uh, so that's what I've been up to, and working on the new album as well. You you never stop, and we're going to talk about a few things, just a couple of accolades <laughs> over the past year. Um, that just that alone, when I when I list this, people are going to say, how do you, how do you manage to fit this all in? So it's yeah. it's great, but I think you probably like you would probably say being busy is a lot better than sitting around being idle, isn't it? Yeah, I think um, I'm very, very easily, I don't know if bored is the right word, or depressed sounds a little too dramatic, sure. but for me, like if I'm not constantly creating or doing something or feeling like I'm growing as a person, it doesn't even necessarily have to be music, but no. it is usually music related, um, I start feeling really down. And I don't know if it's like a hormonal imbalance or something, but I have to keep myself constantly uh, feeling like I'm growing or I feel like I'm dying. I'm sorry to be so melodramatic, no, no. but that's really what, what it is behind everything, you know? No, I, I think that's a positive thing. It's a con constant strive for success and and yeah. achieving and accomplishing something, even if it's just getting something done around the house that you've been you know, putting off or whatever. That's a, I was just talking to my boy about that off the air. It's a great feeling of accomplishment to get things done. Yeah, or eating an entire Domino's Pan Pizza by myself. That... <laughs> <laughs> gives me a little bit of heartburn, but I feel really accomplished after something like okay. that. Okay. All right. That's, well, that's we can always put that on our list of things to accomplish. Uh, we've got a bunch of people over in the chat. I'm going to do my very, very best to say hi to as many as I can. And I, I apologize in advance. It won't be one I've been able to spend a lot of time on today. But just a couple things to mention that are happening during the show today. A couple big giveaways. Uh, one, we're going to be starting off in true Helix Hour tradition. I started this little thing that uh, giving away presets from all the uh, famous artists that come on the show. We've had stuff from Leo from Frog Leap. We've had Jeff from Smashing Pumpkins. We've had Steve uh, Strelacci. We've had uh, a bunch of different people giving us their Helix presets. And we have one directly from your Helix, which is called Banana Metal, correct? Yes, Banana Metal. Why did I name that? Banana metal, I don't know, but it's called it's, banana. It's a cool name. And so <laughs> uh, later on in the show, we're going to post a link for that. My Nocturnal Butterfly is going to post that. And thanks to our good uh, friends and staff over at Line 6, we have four give five giveaways from them. We're going to start off um, with he uh, Line 6 Helix Native software licenses. We have four of those to give away. And then we're going to give away an HX effects unit. And here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to give the rules very quickly and briefly because I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. We're going to have a 60-second window for each one. We're going to guess a number between 1 and 100. And uh, whoever gets the number closest without going over will win that particular product. 
If, uh, for example, someone was to guess, uh, two people were to guess the same number, we're going to go by the timestamp, and whoever got that first, because timestamps are in the chat, if there's a, if two people guess at the exact same time, which is mathematically possible, we will have a tiebreaker. Uh, so there'll be 60 seconds, and Nocturnal Butterfly and Frank will be the governors of that to see who got the right answer. I'll write them down. But I, I just made a note of something that was very, very cool here. Uh, for people, like a lot of people, I know you hear this a lot, a lot of people have heard your music but don't know it's you. And uh, so here's what I said. I just want to paint a picture in the minds of our viewers that will have heard you but maybe don't know it was you. Um, and over the past decade plus, these are just some of the movies that I like a lot, and you were in them. And so I want people to know some of these movies. Sherlock Holmes, Iron Man 2, Rango, Pacific Rim, Hangover Part 2, Clash of the Titans, Batman vs. Superman, Wonder Woman, X-Men First Class, Inception, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, and for the gamers, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, Lego Marvel, Super Heroes 2, and many others. So I, I would like to know how many people come up to you and say, that was you in the soundtrack? I love that. I had no idea. Um, actually, yeah, quite a few. I, I don't usually like walk around and, and say like, oh, guess what? I've, I've done this and that. So I usually don't really say anything. Um, but if somebody does, I guess, randomly find out about it and ask me, it's, it's always like a fun little surprise. And um, I think the most recent one that is, you know, I got a little bit of no notoriety, I think is probably the Wonder Woman main theme that I did with Hans Zimmer. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because I remember uh, when I was looking at some of the comments on just on YouTube where they uploaded the actual like original version from the movie because I also did my own version that was slightly more like metalified and expanded into a full song um, but I saw people writing like oh the guitar is so cool and a part of me you know because like a part of me my childhood dream was to sound like a guitar player I was playing classical cello like a good Asian child um, but I really wanted to be like a cool rock star you know so part of me was like sweet that's great that they think it's uh, electric guitar but then the other half is like, no, it's cello. Uh, so that was, you know, that's fun. And it does sound, I guess, a little bit like the electric guitar, which is kind of the point with my electric cello playing. I think I think something you have in common. This is not not, not something I had on the itinerary today, but it sounds like um, you you have a lot in common with Derek Sherinian, uh, the keyboardist. He he oh, he yeah, almost right? emulated. Have you played with him? Yeah, uh, yes, I actually played on I think one or two, maybe one of his albums, one or two of his albums. So okay, I haven't seen him for a while, but hi, Derek, hope you're doing well. <laughs> yeah, because he's adopted. He sounds he sounds like Eddie Van Halen on the keyboard. Yeah, 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 definitely. So you can see how guitar influences can translate into instruments that are just now. I would say guitar has a lot more similarity to cello than keyboard to cello, but it's nice how you can adopt that, and you know you're all, like a guitarist, and he's a guitarist at heart, pretty much. Yeah, definitely. Do you play? Do you, <laughs> do you play guitar a little bit too? Uh, not really. You know, growing up, uh, I think when I was in middle school, I found a, a MIDI guitar. It was it's like a completely MIDI one with buttons instead of uh, at a garage sale. Okay. And it was really cheap. It was like ten dollars or something. So I was playing around with that, pretending to be a guitar player. But other than that, I really don't have any uh, guitar experience, unfortunately. Okay. Well, that was, you you kind of answered my next question a little bit, but we'll we'll dabble into it. So being classically trained, and this is absolutely amazing. Starting off at the age of three, I mean that's that's phenomenal. And I know a lot of people get into like you know uh, the Suzuki violin method, and I think you started with piano first. But like when when did it just hit you that with the taking the classical training that's very can be hard and rudimentary, like it's it's or I should say, shouldn't say rudimentary, but very challenging for a young yeah. child. Um, when did you take that and fuse in middle and then come up with your own thing? Um, well, you know, I grew up uh, with very, very strict parents uh, because not only are they traditional Chinese parents who grew up during the communist revolution, they were both in the uh, in the Red Army, they were both in the Army, both uh, very, very structured and rigid and classical musicians on top of it. So I had lessons, forced lessons, not by choice, every single day, which is now, of course, I look back and I, I feel very lucky about it because what other kid can go take lessons every day unintentionally? Um, and so I started the piano when I was three and then I moved to cello at age seven, um, and they also did force me to practice. Uh, they actually locked me in a room sometimes and would let me out at certain hours to let me go to the bathroom. Um, and it's it's a little bit intense. Um, and I don't know, but like looking back, maybe you know you tend to look back and idealize things like relationships or whatever. But I do I do think on a very logical, uh, rational level that if they hadn't done that. Really, Eric, I really wouldn't have practiced for eight hours a day starting from age of, the age of seven on the cello. Um, just because that's not, I don't think that's something that most kids naturally want to do. I'd want to go out and play and do stuff. And so there was a lot of uh, 
angst and like I have to admit like anger and frustration that was built into that with with my relationship with the acoustic cello um and I think uh, you know I and I also didn't have a lot of exposure to other types of music because that also wasn't allowed um so here and there I would I would you know f hear certain things from like oh that's interesting but it's like but I have to like hide it because you know that's that's very bad um and when I was in middle school it kind of started shifting my perspective and my knowledge about music uh in middle school I was in seventh grade in San Diego and like the it was a you know pretty um conservative environment so not a lot of goth kids not a lot of metal kids but there was one goth kid and his, his name was Luke he had long hair kind of like yours actually yeah like long <laughs> shoulders like hair dark hair and I thought he was just so like cool and like different and like oh like that's sexy you know that's different um and so I would like hang around with him at lunch and he also wore black lipstick you know full, full on guy yeah I remember like at lunch one day this changed my life he was like hey have you have you ever heard of Marilyn Manson I'm like who Marilyn who who's that who's she um so he he gave me his Antichrist Superstar CD not to not to keep but just to listen to it and I had a really old boom box at home in my room that of course was also from a garage sale and I had like the cassette tape the two in the front where you can like make mixtapes tapes, tapes mm -hmm. and stuff um and on top and I turned it down all the way to like the lowest volume where you have to like kind of put your ear onto it so my parents couldn't hear I literally listened to that album on repeat and it's not, I guess it's kind of metal, like industrial, industrial goth metal ish, you know, industrial music. And I was just so fascinated by the sound, but also I think I really related to like feeling angry, you know, and frustrated and feeling misunderstood. And it was like a lot, a big combination of different things. And I think that's really what like the seed of me wanting to express myself musically in a more aggressive way. Um, uh, in a more like guttural, visceral, like car carnal way, which really isn't allowed in classical music in, in certain, you know, it, it is a, still a very conservative art form, which I also love, you know, I think there's something beautiful about classical music, which is why I still play classical music, but it's just, a, it's like a completely different language um, that's better maybe at speaking and expressing certain feelings. Uh, so I, I always really wanted to do that. And so fast forward, sorry, I talk a little bit too much. Don't oh, good. Miss many tangents for hours. Um, I ended up going to college for classical cello uh, because I got a scholarship, uh, and so I, you know, I didn't have the money to pay for college tuition. So I'm like, great, I got a scholarship for classical cello. I'm playing classical cello. So I went to USC, um, and that was when, you know, I left my parents home of course and i was out in the world by myself um i previous to that the internet had been invented when i was i think in about middle school remember aol would send out those discs yeah the cd cd roms and stuff and like it was super slow but uh, i really i wasn't allowed on the internet so i get to college i'm by myself my parents aren't there anymore i have access to the internet you know i had this like acer like five five hundred dollar laptop computer i remember i'm like i have my own computer oh my god i can you know i can look at like videos and i started watching obsessively like guitar player videos like trying to figure out i'm like I, like, I like the sound, but I don't understand how it works. You know, I don't understand how they improvise. I don't understand, like, the, t the chordal and tonal structures. So it really was a, a, a pretty long process. I think some of the earlier stuff that I tried to do, try to sound like rock and roll, it was pretty horrible. Um, it's probably somewhere in the ethers of the Internet, but, like, there's some pretty, pretty horrible, shitty stuff out there um, just as I was trying to figure out what on earth I was doing. Um, so that's my very long-winded answer of how you know, I started experimenting. It's a great story. It's something I take away from that. And, and here again, this is a different show than my normal show, my uh, EVH and Gear TV show. But it sounds like your parents had a lot of uh, uh, similarities to Eddie Van Halen and Alex's uh, parents. You know, uh, there, was, there was Dutch and Indonesian descent, and uh, they're very, uh, very strict on the boys. And they would, uh, piano practice had to be done. And they, literally, they would be, you know, slapped on the hands if the piano practice wasn't done. And the rock and roll thing wasn't really appreciated uh, in the home. But, you know, we'll reward you by letting you do your rock and roll thing as long as you get the piano lessons done. And uh, so I know there's probably there's there's probably blessings and curses with, with your upbringing, but probably more blessings. And I think if you look back at it now, I know a lot of times as, as uh, our, our children get older, um, you know, they look back at what the parents, they might think it's crazy at the time, but they're like, wow, thank you, mom and dad. You know, so I, I think that's a blessing because look what they've done for you now. They've, they, because of their, their determination and their, their strictness and their supervision and uh, all of that, you've become a success. You know, you're not going to have to struggle in life, uh, you know, necessarily maybe not have to work as hard as they did uh, to make ends meet. I think it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, there's always positives and negatives. And, um, 
despite you know everything else involved in having a career in music, you know, especially nowadays, um, at the very very base level, you I, I feel like you really have to have that basic foundation of being able to play your instrument, mm -hmm. you know, if you're instrumentalist and without the many, many hours of practice, no matter how I rationalize it to myself, like, oh, it's because of this, oh, it's because of that. But in the end, if you're not able to play well, I don't think any of the other stuff really matters, you know? So. That's right. And after you telling me that story and telling us that story, I can see that's why today, how you said just earlier in the program, you said how you feel like you've got to be doing things all the time. I feel like you've still got that from your parents. Like, you know, oh, yeah. I'm working yeah, so yeah. hard because I have to. That's the way I grew up. Yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, actually, definitely. Now, my parents are pretty extreme. I, I don't want to go into too much detail. No, of course. I can imagine it was like ex extreme is to put it lightly. Okay. And I think that's part of my per my permanent like psyche where I'm like, if I'm not doing something, I go, sure. oh, my God, you know, I'm going to get in trouble. No, I have to do something. I have to be productive. So it is a part of that. But, hey, I mean, it's better than just laying around and like, you know, I mean, I still lay around and eat pizzas, but it's yeah, better than doing nothing but that because, um, so I, 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 think, I think it was overall a good thing. Everybody has some lazy time, and everybody's entitled to a little bit of it. <laughs> right, and with your right. schedule, I'm sure a little bit of downtime is not a bad thing. What I'm going to do here very quickly, I'm going to blow through this really fast. I just want to, but I don't want to ignore people in the chat. So, and yeah. I apologize in advance if I if I miss anyone, and I probably won't be able to get too many questions in here yet. But we've got uh, Philip O is here, uh, Sharina Glean is here, uh, Gary Davlin, Sean Close, Dan Hale, and Samuel Moon. Shekius is here, Charles Irison. Uh, uh, Riley Iok Acura, uh, Sebastian Como is here. Nocturnal Butterfly is here. That's my uh, beautiful better half. Uh, let me see here who else we've got. Uh, Frankenstein Doctor, hello from Houston. Uh, Frank Rashad from Line Six is here, saying uh, Tina Grove rocks, and so do all of you. Sean Close is here. Mel O'Brien. Um, let me see here. Uh, Charles Austin, I mentioned him. Uh, let's continue. Mike Cheever's here. Jim Dales, Sean Close, uh, Daryl McMillan is here. Um, Mel O'Brien, I mentioned that name. Let me see. Chris Pierce is here. Uh, Mike HH is here. Carlos Santin, my Canadian uh, friend and Helix uh, lover. Robert Apple is here. Uh, let me see. Continue down the line. Quentin James is here. Nick uh, Cowdroy, I believe. Eric Halbauer is here. Uh, let me see here. Continuing down. Kai Down is here. Mr. Fox is here. Uh, let me see. Continuing. Max Carton Guitar is here. Uh, and uh, uh, Robert Apple has a question. Did I see Tuna, uh, Tina on tour with uh, Joe Bonamassa? Yes, you did with, play with him, didn't you? Yes, I did. I think that was a couple of years ago. Lots of fun. Wicked. And he's an incredible, incredible musician. Uh, Tactical Six String is here. Gary Davlin is here. Uh, and VG says, I'm sorry, I'm pronouncing that wrong. I'm the I'm the worst at names. I apologize in advance. Uh, Frank C is here. Tim Bowen is here. Tim is, a, I think he was a winner in one of our contests before, which is awesome. The Law, Jamie Trevino is here. Uh, Dust Devil is here. James St. Mars. Mike Francis. Uh, Michael B. Philly D. Dan Wilhite is here. Sean Close. Michael Madej. Uh, Robert Ortiz, N let me see, am I missing anybody else? I'm getting down there, I'm getting down there. Uh, Brad is here, Dak Tar is here, JP, JP Packetu is here, uh, Neil Banbury, Dak Tar, mentioned that, Tim Brown, Jason Wade, Alan Newman, uh, I'm probably not going to get to everybody, I'm trying my best, everybody. Uh, Shekius is here, Jason Jesk, uh, Max Carton mentioned him. Uh, we're getting there, we're getting there. Uh, Yer Vios, I'm sorry, James St. Mars, uh, getting, <laughs> we're getting there. Uh, we got a lot of people in the chat, Sonia's here. Uh, I might have mentioned Sonia. I'm not sure. Um, and see if it's anyone else I might have missed. Alan Newman. Not sure if I mentioned him. Chad Boston is here. Hey, Chad. Richard Henry. Um, we're getting so close. Um, this is fantastic. Everybody. Timothy Hawkins. Uh, Eric Halper. I mentioned him. We're getting there. Mel O'Brien. Jason Wade. We got you. We got you. We got you. Um, what we're going to do as we come back in a second, as I'm getting, as I'll kind of set you up with this. What we talk a lot about on the show, on my other show, is how Eddie Van Halen has his own signature line of uh, musical instruments. I want to ask you to tell our, our fans here um, about your brand and what it offers. So I'll just go finish the chat here very quickly. Uh, producing music is here. Uh, Bruce Kelly. I think we've almost got everybody. Ron Hyde is here. Um, just about Cutter Savage is here as well. Timothy Hawkins, I think I mentioned him. Uh, we're getting so close to the very end here for now. And I apologize, everybody, for moving forward. I may not be able to say hi to everybody because we're on a, on a strict time frame. And I, th I think we got it. I think we're, we're close enough. Anyway, Les Bellin I saw in there as well, Mike Cheever, um, and Alexander Belleville, uh, Martin uh, Ijima. Greetings from the Netherlands. I th hope I got that close to being right. Leon Mohan, uh, Ian Guitarman is here, and I, Dave Hart. I don't think I missed anybody, so I do apologize greatly if I do. I'm certainly not slighting you. So let's talk about your brand and what you offer. 
Wow, so many people are here. Yes. Hello, thanks for being here. Happy Sunday. Um, yes, so if you look behind me, over there you see my electric cello. His name is White Walker. Can you guess what my favorite TV show is? Um, but in the middle, this is actually, uh, so I started a line of instruments and bows and carbon fiber cases and the newly added acoustic cello pickup. Um, and this company was started a year ago. It's called Tina Glow Strings. TinaGoStreams.com, very self-explanatory name. Um, and so this acoustic cello is the model. Can you see me okay? Yes, so? perfectly. Yep, we're great. So this is the model 600 cello. Uh, and I have it, uh, I can't tell if you can see below, but I have it attached uh, going through, of course, my lovely Helix that I love so much. Uh, so here. <laughs> that okay perfect it's a pretty big acoustic sound so it's uh here <laughs> using let me bring it a little bit closer so you can see this is uh from the line of they're called elite carbon fiber bows so instead of like wood it's carbon fiber why because you can take it out to the desert i don't know why you want to play out in the desert but maybe burning man or something mm -hmm. um uh, so it's very, very uh, non-warpable. And then I have the pink hair option because pink hair is awesome uh, instead of the regular <laughs> white horse hair. Um, and then if you look here, it's a beautiful ebony, Parisian pearl, uh, silver. And so this is a bow. And then the pickup is just mounted onto the bridge of the acoustic cello. And believe it or not, because I knew I was going on your show, Eric, this morning, that's why I started messing around with the acoustic cello and the Helix, because I usually only play my electric through the Helix. And all of a sudden, I was thinking about it this morning, I'm like, huh, maybe I should plug my cello into the Helix, the acoustic one. And I think it's it's been fun. I've been like noodling around all morning. It sounds great. It sounds really good. And there's actually a question about the pickup. Uh, who was asking? Uh, was it Daktar? Um I just missed it. Someone was asking about the pickup. I forget who asked the question. Uh, so can you tell about the pickup a little bit? I don't know. Here, let me try not to break anything in here. Um, okay. <laughs> I literally have the cello on top of my desk right now. <laughs> so uh, if you can see the pickup right here, it's actually really cool because unlike a lot of other cello pickups, first of all, the sound is great, but it's right here and it's actually mounted into the little uh, slot in the bridge so you actually don't have to do any weird sawing. There's a lot of pickups that you actually have to go to your luthier, mm -hmm. you know, and take the bridge off and then maybe cut the bottom of the bridge and put the, and it's, it's a little bit too invasive for me, you know? Yeah. And so we found a way to just stick, you literally just stick it in there into a slot. Uh, sometimes, you know, you, depending on the bridge that you have, the slot might not be big enough, so they just have to sand it a little bit. Um, and then it just attaches with kind of like a glorified zip tie, it's like a giant zip tie yeah. to, to your tailpiece and then you just stick your quarter inch cable right into there and that's it and it just stays on it i don't think there's not like an on off switch or anything but um the sound quality i might be a little biased since it's from my line but even if it wasn't from my line the sound quality is really great and i've tried almost all the pickups out there so um i'm sorry i don't know what your question was to whoever asked that but hopefully that explains it a little bit oh no it does for sure and i, I love the fact I, I can kind of get the principles like a piezo uh, inside the the bridge so and i think it would sound beautiful with that acoustic instrument because those those instruments really really resonate nice so the resonation of the instrument with the bridge with the piezo um, and the various electronics absolutely stunning for sure and then this is uh white walker my electric cello he also has a piezo pickup but the difference is that the pickup is underneath the bridge um, and because the instrument body, you know, he's lost a few pounds from the traditional cello, uh, the instrument body is much uh, smaller, so there's not as much space, like you said, for it to resonate. Um, so the sound is a lot more, I would say it's a lot more direct. It doesn't sound as celloistic, cellistic. Um, so with my different settings on the Helix, I've tried to kind of EQ to, to make it sound a little bit more similar to the acoustic cello. But I do think that because it is a different instrument, it's obviously not going to be able to sound the same because of the, you know, the way the body's built and whatnot. Um, and so the, the preset that I provided for you for, which is actually my main preset, Banana Metal, um, it is the preset that I use with my electric cello. But I'm also, I'm always like changing things. And so I'll, I'll like adjust the levels depending on what type of music I'm playing because I'm not always playing metal you know on the electric um, but that is my general like preset for the sounds that I use and it's pr it's pretty it's pretty simple so fantastic well we're getting yeah. a lot of people um before you put your instruments away you probably put the electric one away but um people are asking for some more performances so if you want to take a moment and just play anything you like anything that we wouldn't get a copyright strike for but um okay. you feel free to improvise whatever you want and i know the fans are going to love every second of it sure uh oh okay any special requests okay nothing nothing um well maybe if i improvise that'll be sure you'll probably be okay like music. 
why so uh, let me see so i'm switching this but i'm gonna you right now i'm going through my clean tone um maybe i'll put a little bit of delay oh, hold on one second Okay, that's okay. Pause. Oh, wait, it's a live show. Okay, hold on one second. No problem. Oh, it's there. Can you hear it? It's a little bit. Yep, there. we can. That was absolutely amazing. The fans are loving it. I loved it. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, it's kind of random. No, no, that's fine. It's just, you know what it is with YouTube. You can appreciate this for sure with copyright. I mean, it, there's, we had I, even even my better half was uh, suggesting some things too. And there's some great uh, suggestions in the chat. Just YouTube will flag it immediately. And then, you know, it's a, it's a shame, right? Okay. Yeah. So I have to play things that don't make any sense. <laughs> kind <laughs> of. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> but it's it's fantastic to hear that. And so people were asking earlier in the chat, they were saying, does she use Helix? And obviously, yeah, that's that's one of the reasons why you're here. It's such a versatile tool. I, let me see if I can. Oh, there you go. Yep, we got it. Ta -da! Helix yes. LT. Yes, the Helix has completely replaced my uh, entire. I used to use, play through Engel uh, mm -hmm. amp and all of my you know analog pedals and everything. And um, I, I had an epiphany. I saw the light, and now I've gotten rid of everything. Like literally, the only thing I use is this. It's it's amazing. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, we talk about that a lot. That's one of the key things we're seeing more and more and more on the show. All these artists that would normally travel the world, like when I'm talking about I'm talking about the bands per se, not individual solo artists, but you know, traveling with like 16 Marshall 412 cabinets, you know, and you know, a 50 piece drum kit, you know, blah blah blah, and the lighting rigs. Now, you know, the musician can travel with one particular thing. So here's a double a double uh, uh, edged question here. Number one. Um, when was it that you were introduced to Helix and who, how, how did you discover it? And two, so you're saying now that this is all you use. There's a million different ways to use Helix. You can run it directly to the front of the house. You can use it now. You might have partly answered this. So number one, uh, how were you introduced to it? And when did you start it? And uh, also, how are you using it in the exact live format? Okay, so I think it might have been, it was pretty recent, uh, maybe in the last six months. I believe, which is you know very very recent, and I was super opposed to it before because I always said no. I love my pedal board. I love all the actual like physical pedals that you can feel. I don't want. I really didn't want to go digital. Um, don't know why. I was just really opposed to it. And my front of house engineer uh, Igor, who conveniently also happens to be the, I believe he was the senior developer on. The helix and so he was like you know you really should try out because i i was having some feedback issues with like because uh when i was touring with my band uh with my solo project i would have the local um you know promoters provide like different amps and stuff and i would bring all of my pedals and whatnot but you know there's always these issues with the sound and level balancing and different different things work differently in different venues um so it was always kind of a nightmare you know doing the sound checks and you know, Igor kept saying, oh, you should try the Helix, you should try the, I'm like, no, 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 I'll just figure it out. I wanted to, and then finally, he just like kept talking about it. I'm like, all right, maybe you can come over and bring the unit and like, let's try it out. And so we plugged it in. And right now, uh, if you heard when I was playing, I'm just playing on a tiny, real, it's, I've had it for like a decade. I got it at Guitar Center in Vegas on sale for like 80 bucks or something. It's just a little tiny uh, 25 watt uh, Fender frontman in red. Um, <laughs> so just a tiny little practice amp. Uh, and so we just plugged it into that. 
and then I played around with it. I'm like, oh my God, there's no feedback. There's no, I mean, it's crazy. And I'm like, does it have this effect? Does it have that effect? He's like, Tina, it has everything. You know, I'm like, oh my God, like, why have I been, you know, dealing with all this other stuff? And so when I finally was able to actually physically try it, it was a little confusing at first. I'm like, oh, there's so many buttons and like the touch, you know, the sensor stuff. But he's like, no, 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 trust me. If you just play around with it for like, an hour you'll figure it out and lo and behold the next day I was you know playing around with it with um the built-in looper I really really love because the looper I was using before was a little ditto looper which oh, yeah. is great yeah. but it's tiny and there's not you know there's not a lot of like different things that you can do with it so um I was a uh, very quickly I was very against it and then very very quickly converted um I even got the backpack and everything you know the <laughs> to carry it around um and now when I do live shows, like, for example, these uh, three live shows that I have coming up in the next couple weeks, um, I'm only bringing the pedal board. It's also amazing that you don't need like a uh, not a generator, what am I, a power, um, like a converter. You know, you just need the little head because it works in every every place around the world. I'm like, I, I just can't believe it. Technology is amazing. Um, so I'm only bringing that. And usually I'll just connect directly, you know, to the to the soundboard uh, using the XLR outs or whatever is convenient for them. And there's been no issues, you know, really like nothing, zero issues. Now you're wearing like a wireless in-ear monitor as well? Um, it, it depends on the situation. So for my, uh, let's see, the next two shows I'm doing, I'm just using a floor monitor. Um, and like the backing tracks that I play with, I make sure to program them. So I have a little bit of like, you know, lead time, I know how it goes. Um, and then for some other situations, like when I play with Hans Zimmer, and there's, you know, literally like hundreds of people on stage, and everything's going on, everybody's on click. Um, so then I'll use in ears for that type of situation. And also for my solo show, because we have, um, I, I play with my band but it's the music is orchestrated for full symphony full choir and a band and i can't afford to bring along 100 people with me so we have the orchestra and the choir and some of the other stuff in the backing track so obviously if we use those and we also need to have um in here just for the clicks but i i don't know i feel like i'm like old school is, is that what it is where i just i prefer to hear it in the room yeah you know monitor and just like because i feel like sometimes when it's just in here i'm like i can't tell what it sounds like outside and there's no way to kind of adjust to it you know because you're just in your in yours but you know you have to sometimes that's right sometimes like I, as a guitar player I, I like to hear the delay bouncing off the back of the wall you know i like yeah. to, to hear the room acoustics so you know, when you sometimes yeah. have that you know uh, an mp3 or like a walkman or what's what i'm looking for an ipod a walkman shows my age <laughs> an ipod an ipod sound quality in your ear it's just too processed sometimes it's nice to hear that natural uh sound of the room and everything and the instrument yeah it reminds me i saw this uh what, what was it from um this is it, you know, Michael Jackson. Mm, yeah. It sounds like it's just punching me in the ear. Like that's what it sounds. It's so like too almost too direct, you know. But um, but it's okay, you know. Right. I, I try to be flexible, whatever's appropriate for the situation. Speaking of Michael Jackson, since how you mentioned it, and uh, some of my uh, Van Halen uh, fans over here and, and the show will appreciate this, you did a stunning rendition of "Beat It" on cello, the solo. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah that was on um, the official album for the Michael Jackson, The Immortal World Tour by Cirque du Soleil. Uh, this, this was back in 2011. So from 2011 to 2013, I sold all of my belongings, except for my car at the time. It was a pimped out Chrysler 300 with huge 21 inch rims, blacked out windows, which is not allowed. Um, and so I kept that and then I kept my musical instruments and I sold everything else. And I went on tour with the circus for two years. Um, it was half owned by the Jackson estate, the show, and half owned by the Cirque du Soleil. So it was a really crazy, it was like a, almost like a rock, arena rock show, yeah. but with circus elements in it. So that was a, a, a amazing experience. Really, really grateful for that. It sounds like a night and I encourage everyone to look that up, search it up on YouTube because that's very, very cool. Um, so we're going to jump over in a second to start doing some of the giveaways. But before we do that, I'm going to get my Nocturnal Butterfly to post a link to the download of your preset. There's no nothing you have to sign up for. You just click the link and you can download it. It's called Banana Metal. And just give us a bit of a snapshot, kind of a description of what people can expect, even though they're not going to use it necessarily on a cello. What does it contain? I mean, honestly, I don't know how these effects are going to sound on a non-cello mm -hmm. instrument because a cello is, you know, very different, but you can play around with it. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very basic. So I usually use either a clean tone, like the tone that you just heard, although you heard a lot of like the natural acoustic cello sound as well, because that's super loud. Mm -hmm. um, and I have my uh, distortion, which is like a distorted amp sound that Igor helped me figure out uh, when he was over, you know, helping me, convince me to... Uh, 
to see the light of Helix. Right. Um, and it's the Line 6 Fatality uh, amp. That's like my distortion sound. So I've, you know, tweaked it a little bit myself. Um, and then I have a super reverby cave uh, reverb. And then I have two different delay pedals, which I, I usually change depending on what song I'm doing. I know some people, um, they have like a different, completely new preset for each song even if it's, but I'm like weird. I like to like kind of like mess around with it like in, in real time and then just figure it out, you know, and um, let's see, what else do I have? Well, the, uh, the wah is built in, okay. right? And then let's see, I think, oh, of course, the octaver. So when I'm trying to be a bass player, <laughs> try to sound, make like woolly mammoth sounds, you know, I'll use the octaver, which I ha currently have set, I believe in the preset that I sent over, it's an octave below. Okay. Uh, and then finally the looper pedal, because who doesn't love to loop themselves? Of course. And yeah. mess up like I did on, on uh, hey. live with you. <laughs> No problem at all. And here's the cool thing. Just because we, probably 99% of the people that are going to be using this patch are not going to be cello players, the nice thing I like about Helix and people creating uh, presets is that if they get one little takeaway from it, maybe, maybe they happen to like your delay, or maybe they just happen to like the octave setting, they can copy that block and place it into another preset of their own. So there's always great takeaways. And at the same time, everyone that's out there, their dreams are their favorite artists out there. They want to be able to play on their rig. So it, I know a lot of people are just going to put your preset on their on their Helix. They may not even use it, but they're going to say, yeah. hey, I have Tina's preset on my Helix. You can't say that, right? <laughs> you know, so it's going to be pretty cool. No, it, is, it is cool, definitely. That's right. I'm going to get my hands on the other presets that you that you have. Hey, I'd be, I'd be very happy to share. I got a bunch of cool ones. Um, yep. I'll, I'll share a bunch with you. And here again, too, you can, um, you can just uh, take what you want and, and edit whatever you like, and there might be some cool delay. One thing that you might want to experiment with, I think you'd really love this, and the, here again, this is an Eddie Van Halen thing, but um, uh, slight detune. So you might put a stereo detune in there, right. and so instead of pitching the instrument actually in an interval, you're just using millisecond, like cents. So on the left-hand side, dro uh, you drop the pitch down by about uh, anywhere between five to maybe nine cents, and then on the right side, do the opposite, pitch it by f five to nine positive, and all of a sudden, boom, the stereo spectrum now just and then bring the mix down you don't want it to the point where it's going to be like oh but that's crazy bring the mix right. back a little bit and you will love that i can just imagine oh awesome i'll, I'll definitely have yeah I'll, sh Thanks. I'll share that with you for sure yes. so <laughs> let's let's do um let's do this for a second we're going to come back and get into some more questions with you but we're going to do we're at 337 we're doing good on time i'm really happy with that uh we're going to do the four helix native licenses so i'm going to try to be very clear on this how this is going to work everyone's going to get one chance to guess you only get to get a guess once i'm going to use a 60 second timer and Nocturnal Butterfly is going to uh, say uh, stop, okay? I will say stop, she will say stop, and, and no votes will be counted um, after uh, the, the 60 seconds, okay? So I make sure my timer is set for a minute. Now it's gonna be a guess from one to 100, the closest person um, getting to the to, uh, getting the number without going over uh, will be the winner. Now, if two people happen to guess the exact same number, we're going to go by the timestamp. If the first person with the timestamp with the correct answer will be the winner. If it mathematically happens where the two people get the same uh, answer, same timestamp, we'll have a tiebreaker. So we have four of these to give away. So we're going to spend about four minutes on this, and we're going to do one, two, three, and four. This is for the Helix Native. Uh, software license. Okay, so I'm going to make sure she is ready. I'm going to say ready for contest. And Frank is also going to be monitoring this as well. The two of them will monitor the, who the actual winner is. And as you can see, I've got a piece of paper sitting here with Helix Native 1, 2, 3, and 4 and HXFX. Nobody's name's on here yet, so we're making a legit contest. And <laughs> that's my disclaimer. All right, so here we go. All right, so one second, everybody. Get ready for this. All right, and I'm just going to jump over to another screen. One second. Uh, we have that ready. Okay, so we have a random number generator from 1 to 100. All right, so um, let me make sure she's ready. And we are about to go. So when as soon as I say go, guess a number between 1 and 100. All right, and when I say stop, we stop. All right, so ready, everybody? Go. All right, everyone, good luck. Contest running. And we'll just talk about the weather. All right, here we go. And we have about a 30 second delay with everyone's what I say to what they're hearing. But uh, I've got my better half on the uh, go as well. And we are at 44 some odd seconds. So I'll tell you, this is really good to have you on the episode for our first episode back. And it's nice to have you back when we're doing a contest, which is pretty awesome. So this is, this is a lot of fun. People are guessing numbers right now. They're going absolutely crazy. 
So I'm going to have to uh, rely on my better half and Frank to help me pick this because there's so many things going on on the screen at one time here that I just I have to remove myself from that element. And I don't want to actually say there's a winner and I might have got it wrong and then they have to go by what I said. So I removed myself from that. All right, they're guessing pretty good. We're at 12 seconds. Okay, get ready, everybody. All right, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. And get ready and stop, stop, stop. Okay, stop, stop. Okay, stop. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, turn that off. Okay, all right. Okay, they're still going. Okay, okay. There's a whole bunch going. Yeah, it's one guess. Okay, it's only one guess. As as anybody anybody uh, who whoever guessed uh, multiple times, we cannot take your second answer. Stop. Got to stop. Stop, everyone. Okay. All right. I think we got them stopped. Okay. Yeah, we have to stop and uh, make that clear again one more time. It can you can only guess once. Okay. So here comes the number. I'm going to generate it. There you go. The winner is 45. So whoever got the closest to 45 without going over, okay. All right, so now I'm hoping we didn't, if, if we pick a winner and a person guessed twice, we're gonna have to disqualify you, all right? So, and, okay. Yeah, by stop, do I mean stop? <laughs> okay, so I wanna, I wanna talk to you while we get ready to set up the second, the second contest. Um, w any other Line 6 products that you use? Like, uh, do you um, use like Line 6 wireless or anything like that? Is there any other products in the in the wheelhouse of Line 6? Um, I do have a wireless system with me. I actually haven't experimented with it yet because it's something new. So I will play around with that a little bit. But as of right now, I just, you know, plug directly into the pedal board. Um, since I can't get too far away from the pedal board, A, because I play the electric cello standing up and the in pin is stuck to the ground. So I can spin it around and stuff, but I can't like run around, unfortunately, like a guitar player on stage. Um, and then, so yeah, that pretty much, it kind of like makes having a um, wireless system a little bit pointless if I am using the pedal board. If I play, for some reason, I play a song just on one setting, um, then it could be useful. So I could stand somewhere a little bit further away. But other than that, no, that's the only uh, Line 6 product that I use. But I did hear earlier that you, I think you're using Rode. Uh, Rode microphones, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, so I, I do a lot of remote recording sessions, recording sessions for, you know, composers, film projects, and people's albums. Um, and I still use the same microphone that I also got at Guitar Center like a decade ago. It's a Rode NT1000, which is not a, not an expensive microphone. And people are sometimes surprised, like, what? You use that? And I'm like, yeah. I mean, it sounds, I, I think it sounds great. I love the sound of it and don't fix what's not, you know, what's not broken. And so I use that to record my acoustic cello. Um, I use Logic. And then, of course, I use Helix Native, you know, um, and then for my interface, I have the Apogee Duet. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I love the Rode products. I said everything you see in the studio pretty much is run by Rode. So I love it. Um, so someone was asking if it's a Helix or software that we're giving away. So in this case, it is actually the Helix Native software. It's a software licenses. Um, so we have a bit of a dilemma on the first one because people were entering multiple times. Um, so I'm waiting for some suggestions on that one. Uh, waiting for the in information to come on that one. And uh, let me see. Let's go back over to the, the question here for a second as well, too. Um, so uh, regarding that one patch, too, like you were saying earlier as well, too, um, that you were using clean sometimes, too. So do you turn a distortion off sometimes on that preset? Um, actually, it's not a distortion. It's technically a switching between two uh, completely different amps. And so I have one that's a, it's the jazz, was it jazz rivet? You know, that's like my clean tone. Yep. And I've adjusted it so it's very, very clean. Uh, and then that was the one that I felt like was closest-ish to the pseudo acoustic sound. Um, and then the when I, I have a program, so it's the same button. So it switches back and forth between the distorted uh, line six fatality setting and that one. Okay. All right, so we have we have our uh, technically I'm going to go with Nocturnal Butterflies uh, call here. She said Gabe 44 is the winner for the first uh, Helix Native uh, license. So we're going to do this again. And I'm, I apologize if I'm not clear. I'm going to try to do this clear again. One guess only, please, please, please. It's hard enough to do this as it is. One guess only from each person. If we get someone again with uh, multiple guesses, we will disqualify you. I'm sorry, if, even if you win. Okay, and watch me, for me to say stop in the chat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually type stop, and I'm gonna hit enter when it's ready. All right, so I'm gonna get that ready to go. We're gonna do this again three times very quickly. All right, so I got the word stop ready to go. Okay, and I'm gonna say stop, 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 because <laughs> I want people to stop. Okay. <laughs> We're going to do this again. All right, let's jump back over to that random screen. 
Okay, so that was our last answer. Okay, so we're going to do this again. One guess per person between 1 and 100 for the second license. Are you ready? Set. Go. Okay, it's going. Good luck, everybody. All right, here we go. Um, people are guessing like crazy. We have a, actually a fantastic group of people in the chat. We've got 114 people watching live right now, which is great. Uh, very, very thankful for this. This has been very fun and exciting. And obviously, as I was telling you, uh, Tina, off the air, you know, it's fun doing contests, but at the same time, you know, it's, it, some people go away without being winners. So it's kind of bittersweet, you know what I mean? But we're doing yeah. our very, very best here. All right, so we are at uh, 29 seconds. And please watch for that stop and do not enter twice, okay? We're just trying to make this as fair as possible. And I have to thank Line 6 for doing this for us today because this is an absolutely beautiful thing and a lot of people are getting to uh, uh, to participate. 15 seconds. Okay, here we go. Okay, and we have nine seconds left. Eight, seven, six, five, four. Stop, okay, stop. One second, stop, 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 stop. Okay. All right, so we're gonna generate a number. All right, here we go again. Okay, and we're gonna generate, okay. Okay, one second, sorry, here we go. All right, generate. The winning number is 70. 70 is the winning number, okay. Sorry, Cynthia, you come in way too late. Sorry, nope, sorry, Bogsy, seven, nope, we can't, can't count that, okay, all right. So hang on, we're gonna get the numbers here as well. We're gonna tell you everything. Okay, all right, one second. Okay, let me jump back over here for a quick second here. We'll get okay. guest number. So also as well too, we've been posting links throughout the uh, the afternoon here as well. But in the description, we've got links to your Facebook, we've got links to uh, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and also your Spotify as well. So I encourage people and uh, hit the website for sure uh, too, just to find out everything. It's kind of a uh, all encompassing place to find out everything that you're doing. There's some great things. Uh, th they are great things going here. All right. So next thing, uh, we're gonna have Nocturnal Butterfly. Um, she's scolding me because I didn't tell her when we we're starting. <laughs> so <laughs> you always gotta please the wife. Uh, so I will tell her as well. She will say go, all right? And then um, I, if she wants to say stop, that's fine. I'll also say stop. Okay, so who do we have on there? We have number 70. It was the winner on that one, all right? We're trying to tell you that one. So we're looking for basically from either Frank or Nocturnal Butterfly to tell us who the winner was on that one. Thank you for your patience, Tina, as we do this as well, too. I know this could, can be boring uh, to get the, uh, the draws out of the way. It's not boring. This is very exciting. I mean, if I didn't have the software already myself, I'd be entering too. Please. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> yeah, the number is 70. 70, she's asking the number. 70 is the winner. Okay. Frank Rashad is saying 69. If we can confirm that with Nocturnal Butterfly. Okay. That's fantastic. All right. Okay. Okay. We'll see who that was. Okay. We're just waiting. Okay, and Frank, uh, yeah, there's a lag, no problem. All right, so we're getting some time on that. So what? Uh, so we're looking at, you're, you're in uh, Pacific time, so you're a little bit behind us. So after when the show is over, your day is kind of just starting. So what's yeah. after the show, what's what's your schedule? Well, after the show, I haven't eaten anything yet. Uh -oh. So I, I was actually just thinking, I'm like, what am I gonna eat? Uh, so I'm gonna eat food, have more coffee, and then I'm going to do a remote session for a gentleman named Jonah, a guitar player, actually, for his solo album. Uh, so I'm going to be doing that. I'm arranging and writing my own parts for that. Um, and then after, so the first event that I'm doing for Bentley at this um, classic car show up in Pebble Beach next week is on Friday night. And it's a little bit like high pressure for me because uh, they have the head, a CEO of a champagne company, of a wine company, and also the head of um, design for Bentley speaking. And then the other speaker is me. And I'm like, what do you want me to talk about? And so I'm going to be discussing um, kind of like comparing the parallels between the world of the cello um, and Bentley's world of luxury and performance um, by comparing the acoustic cello, the use of technology, you know, to make all these advancements with the electric cello, with the helix, which I'm bringing with me. So in, in addition to playing three songs, I also have to obviously like talk and, uh, and you know, make a speech. So I have it kind of written down. I've been mumbling to myself like a crazy person like every morning I wake up and I'm like oh, blah, 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 about the Bentley stuff and so I'm just like constantly practicing that and uh, that's what I think I'll probably be doing for the rest of the day is practicing um, and trying to memorize the speech so it sounds natural 
Fantastic. I was going to ask you anyways about the Bentley. You had a, a relationship with them. So that's very cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I signed a, a one-year partnership with them earlier this year, and I actually composed the music uh, for the new Bentayga, which is their SUV. It's a hybrid version of the Bentayga. And uh, Philippe Stark designed the the charging dock, which is absolutely beautiful. I was actually able to go to Switzerland to the auto show there where they kind of did the reveal, and I was so starstruck because I love all of his designs, you know? So and, and I was like, I was telling myself, Tina, don't be stupid. Just go up to him and say hi, you know? And I, like, walked... I kept, I, I think I tried like three or four times. And I just couldn't, like, I could, I don't know. I just felt embarrassed. And finally I asked my friend Mike from Bentley. I'm like, hey, could you introduce me? Because I'm too chicken to go talk to him. Um, he was very nice, of course. So, uh, yeah, that that is definitely something I'm very grateful to be a part of. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you for sharing it with us. We have our winner for the second one. That's Ian uh, was number 69. Okay, so I'm going to put Ian 69. Okay, we're going to do this again. We're getting better each time around. So what we're going to do this time, make it, I mean, I'm not changing the rules or anything. Trust me on that. We're just making it go more efficient and more efficient. So knock, as soon as I tell Nocturnal Butterfly here, I'm going to text her. She's going to say start in the chat. And the minute I see her say start, I'll hit the timer here as well. Okay, so I'm going to give her the green light. Okay, so we're going to do this again. Okay, we've got two more to go as far as the Helix native licenses. And um, and I'll tell you at the end how you go to get those. You'll contact me and I'll forward it off to line six. Okay, so... Okay, I'm gonna say get ready. I'll say you say go. I hit timer. We're like uh, 30 feet apart, but we're texting one another. It's hilarious. <laughs> She's gonna be in here eventually. She's gonna be uh, helping me run in here as well too. Okay, all right. So as soon as she says go, say go. And it's gonna be between one and 100 again when she says go, all right? Okay, I'm waiting for her timer. Just waiting for her on that one. She's gonna say go. Go. All right, there you go. It's running, good. I'm gonna say get stop ready. I'll say when. Okay, and one guess each people. 37 seconds, 35 seconds. And trust me, thank you for your patience, everyone, as well, too. Uh, participating, it's not an easy thing to do, but it's probably the best way to be fair with everybody. All right, 25 seconds. Okay. All right, getting close. 15 seconds. All right, 10 seconds. Eight. Five. Okay, and we'll get, everyone get ready. She's going to say stop. Okay, there we go. Perfect. This went really, really well. This went really well. Okay, thank you, everybody. We're getting this down. We're ruling. We're going we're gonna to get this down on time. This is very good. Thank you to, uh, to Tina, and thank you to Frank, and especially over here, Nocturnal Butterfly. This is a lot of pressure on her for sure, and I know she's, uh, she's doing this voluntarily. Okay, so let's go over here. We're going to draw that number again. All right. So here we go. And the lag, I'm sorry. I can't help on the lag. That's YouTube's end. I'm sorry. Uh, we're doing our best, though. All right, so here we go. We're going to generate a number between 1 and 100. Sorry, everyone, you got to stop. You got to stop. She said stop a few minutes ago. All right, and here we go. We're going to generate a number. 75 is the number. All right, all right. So anyone that be after the stop, we can't count your votes. I'm sorry. We're trying our very, very best here. Um, I know, so that's okay. If people that are still coming, I'm sorry. I'll just say I can't help that. All right, we're doing our best. We've got one more to go, and we're going to give away an HX effects, and we're going to let everybody go enjoy the rest of their Sunday afternoon. Um, let me see here. And uh, Terry saying, yeah, there's a 30-second delay between Nocturnal and Eric. Okay, no problem. Um, <laughs> some people are saying, every time we hear the alarm go off, I think it's my phone. All right, so I do thank you, everyone, for your patience in participating. And, yeah, there's still some people, there's still some people um, guessing numbers now. All right, we'll just pick the ones that we had before the stop. All right, we'll get through this. All right, how we doing? How we doing? Everything's going good. So I I do have to thank you as well too for uh, earlier today when you did the uh, little bit of a live performance and you uh, made a shout out to us because that did bring some new fans over to the show. Obviously, people that uh, enjoy your work. So very oh. very grateful for that. Of course, I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's great. I really appreciate it. Okay, so I'm going to look to Frank and I'm going to look to uh, to Nocturnal Butterfly to pick that winner and we're going to get through this one more time. All right, and we'll see what we can do. All right. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Andrew Emery says, great show, Eric, uh, Tina, and Butterfly. Thank you. I appreciate that. 
Um, lots of people are participating. This is really, really good. I'm just waiting for an answer. That looks like I'll get two at 73. All right, our number was 75. Okay, so how are we doing there on that one, guys? Mm -hmm. Two at 73. So let's write that down for a second. 73, just in case that's the number. Okay, just waiting on that. That's what Carlos Santon said that. Yeah, so Darren Moore makes a good point as well, too. Choose a number between 1 and 100. I've seen some over 100. So, yeah, it's got to be between 1 and 100. Okay, we're hopefully we'll get this right away. All right. All right, who do we have? Just waiting on the answer on that one. I'm going to go to the YouTube uh, video here on my phone. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Writing. <laughs> yeah you, you go right ahead. Yeah, look at the, uh, the chat there at the bottom, and you'll be able to pull it up. Okay, so I, is that the answer? I'm just going to ask. I'm going to ask if that was who it is. Okay, perfect. Okay, Ron Hyde is the winner. Okay, um, Ron Hyde. Okay, let me write that down. Ron Hyde. Okay, all right. Um, I guess I say suggestions for next. Okay. All right, so thank you, everybody. we got one more to go through, and then the last one's going to be easy because we're going to be doing the biggest one, which is uh, the HX effects. Okay, so we're going to get ready here in a second. Okay, and unless, you know what, maybe this might work better as well, too. Uh, Nocturnal Butterfly, let me know if you would like to, say, start and stop and actually time it uh, on the minute up there as well, too. I'll say, would you like to, uh, to time? Okay, we'll see how that goes. We're almost done, everybody. Um, <laughs> and uh, Mel O'Brien says, thanks, Tina, for putting up with us, for sure. <laughs> no yeah. worry. Yeah, Alan Newman says, Tina is inspirational. Um, uh, Mascani says, uh, that's my friend Brad, says, Tina, if you see this, can you, will you play the Dark Knight theme, just for a part at least? We can't, unfortunately, Brad. I, I know that's a phenomenal piece, um, but we can't. Even if, like, YouTube could pick three seconds, and it's okay. It could be five seconds. There's no rule on what it is. Anything will be flagged, for sure. And I know that's a, that's amazing uh, piece, an amazing composition. That's what you did with uh, Hans Zimmer, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to say, okay, yeah, you time. Okay. All right. So we're going to do this again. All right. And it's going to make it even easier. Nocturnal Butterfly is going to say start. She's going to monitor the time so there's no delays. All right. Here again, we're just trying to make this fair for everyone. So um, you, say, you say go. All right. And this is the last one for the last Helix native license. And I'm telling you, there's nothing you can't do with native that you can't do with the real Helix. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, let me see here. Maybe she will or can on her own page. Yes, for sure. On her own page, on Tina's page, she can play whatever she wants because she, she owns the copyright to these songs. And uh, the way it works, here, here's so people don't really understand this, is, um, okay, yep, say one minute. Yep. And, and say stop. And say stop. Okay, watch, watch for um, Nocturnal Butterfly to say go. Okay, she's going to go. One second, and as, she, as her people are guessing, I'm going to mention what I was just talking about. Okay. All right. I'll say waiting on you. Okay. She's going to go. Kate, watch watch for Nocturnal Butterfly to say go. She's going to be saying that any second. All right. And we're probably going to run just a couple minutes over the uh, the Helix Hour, a little over 60 minutes here. But that's okay for this one today because we're doing a, an, an unorthodox contest. So we'll see how that goes. All right. I'll say you say go. Okay, there you go, everyone. Okay, and the minute Nocturnal Butterfly says stop, it, that counts. So what I was saying, what I was saying earlier with uh, the copyright, YouTube and everyone who produces music and puts it up on YouTube submits a lot of their music to like the labels or the digital publishers will submit it to YouTube and they'll catalog and they'll index that stuff. And they have fantastic algorithms. So if I was to use some of Tina's music and use it as a bed track in my in one of my videos, the minute it's uploaded it will send a signal to the digital publicist. That publicist will say, oh, there's a flag. Um, Eric is using Tina's music. And then that digital publicist has the, the, the uh, opportunity to say, okay, I want to flag this for copyright or I'll let it slide. Uh, it's really, it's almost uh, mostly robotic, but the thing is it will probably get flagged. And that's why we just, as content creators, we don't want to get flagged and copyright strikes for using other people's music. So I was, having, I was having that happen with Van Halen for a while and that has been fixed. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so that's that's the reason why we're not having the you know the classical performances of you know the true classics that we know from movie scores and things like that. Okay, so we're wrapping up this one here. She's going to say stop in a second. Paul Pablo, you're guessing so many times. You uh, you're going to probably disqualify. You, I see Pablo's guess like about seven times. We cannot uh -oh. we cannot get, take your account, uh, Pablo. I'm very sorry. One guess per person. I'm trying to make it as clear as possible, but it's uh you know it is what it is. 
All right, so, okay, all right, we're done. All right, that's it, no more guesses after that. Okay, so let's go draw that number again. I'm gonna hit generate, and this is just a Googled random generator. Okay, 63 is the answer. I'm gonna say 63, and Tina, you are a champion for putting up with this, I really appreciate it. Of course, no problem. But there's gonna be a lot of people that maybe weren't into Helix after hearing you play and a chance to win some of these things here in the chat. They're gonna be like, wow, I heard it, I heard Tina play, now I get to do some of the similar things. And uh, here's another thing too that people might not realize is they can take your preset and bring it into native as well. Exactly. Yeah, that exactly. will work on their computer as well too. The only thing that wouldn't work if there was like loops, like sends and returns and things like that, but you're not using it in a case like that. So it should no. it should work per, uh, uh, perfectly. And Pablo, I'm very sorry that we couldn't get you in there. Okay, and he's he's being uh, you know truly truly sorry on that. So it, it happens. It's the nature of a live show and a uh, uh, a live contest. The last one coming up once we get this one here is going to be for the HX effects, which is a, a phenomenal unit. You can instead of taking out a huge pedal board now, you can take out an HX effects. Like if you are a guitar player or a bass player and still wanted to use an amp and want an effects unit, it's got everything you need in there as well too. So we're just waiting for an answer on the last one. All right, coming up. This is fantastic. We're almost there. Okay, and we're just waiting for the closest on that. So the number was 63. Okay, and we're gonna find that in a second. All right, I'm gonna just kind of scan them as well too. I'm seeing some 68s, okay. All right, some numbers. This one looks like it might, okay, I'm seeing a 62. Okay, all right, Ural winner. Ural is winner 63, okay, Ural. Okay, all right, so I'll write that down. Okay, okay. So you four winners, Ural is the winner. We're gonna do the last one here in a second. All the people that are winners, contact me through the Facebook page, either through, actually, uh, let's send you all to one page. Go to facebook.com slash the Helix Hour. Send me a message through there with your um, your email address and contact information, and I will forward that to uh, line six, and line six will get you the license for your software. Okay, all right, now this is the very last draw, and then we're gonna let Tina go because she's been so patient for this contest. All right, so we're gonna say, get ready. For go, I will say, for HX effects. Okay, and good luck to everybody on this last one. All right. Okay, I will tell them right, right when to go. Okay, get ready. You are okay to go. Okay, this is for the HX effects. As soon as you see Nocturnal Butterfly, say go, and please stop when she says stop. Okay. All right, so we're good, we're, we're all good. Yep, I think Frank and, and Nocturnal are on the same page. Okay, all right, we're gonna wait for Nocturnal Butterfly and there is a little bit of delay, so she'll get that. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Everybody's so close. Close only counts in horseshoes. No problem. Gotta wait, don't, no, did she say go? She didn't, okay, go. Gotta wait for Nocturnal Butterfly. It's so hard to do contests. All right, and this is the last one. This Someone's gonna walk away with an HX effects unit. So when the contest is over, like I said, just like I told the others just a moment ago, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash the Helix Hour. Send me a message through there. Uh, in this case, it's gonna be a shipping address, a physical address, so I'll need your name, address, uh, post office box, whatever you whatever you have, um, and an email address as well too for them to contact you. That will be shipped, drop shipped directly from line six. And it is open world, worldwide, so whoever wins it. Okay, now watch for Nocturnal Butterfly to say what she says, okay? I don't wanna say the word out loud because people are gonna think I said it. <laughs> We're almost done. You could have made yourself you could have made yourself another coffee while you're waiting. <laughs> no, I had to be here for the excitement. I know. And on top of that too, you've had so many coffees already with no food. It's not a good thing. Yeah, this this one there's a tiny bit left. It's cold, but I'll still drink it. Yeah, I find that usually here in the studio as well too, that it goes cold before I get really get a chance to enjoy it. I'll get two sips in and then it's it's cold. And you I never like to waste coffee, so I always chug it anyways. Mm -hmm. It's funny how coffee goes cold. We don't like it so much, but yet we'll buy an iced coffee. Okay, everyone's saying stop, all right? All right, so here we go. Stop this. Okay, everyone is doing great. Okay, no, William S. May. Okay, you uh, can't. Okay, she, she said stop, so we're done. All right, so we're going to generate a number. Here we go. All right, here we go. Generate a number. 56 is the, uh, the number. 56. 56. I'm texting that back to my better half. All right, 56. Good luck to everybody. Let's see who this is. Uh, this is a good one. Sammy Moon says, Tina must be starving. Everyone, call call uh, Godfathers or Domino's or whatever uh, is in the area and send them to <laughs> Tina and get her loaded up. with. Send, send one pepperoni, send a deluxe, send uh, <laughs> yeah, a pineapple, whatever you want. <laughs> All right, so we'll see what we got here. 
Cold pizza is good too. Frankenstein doctor. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with cold pizza. I, I I do prefer my pizza nice and hot with the cheese like dripping a lot of cheese. Yep, I do too. But it's not like cold pizza. I'll eat it too. That's right. When you're starving in the morning and uh, and you want a, a a quick a quick bite, that's a certain, certainly nothing wrong. And breakfast pizza is nothing wrong with that. Mm-mm. All right. So this one is for the HX effects, and we're only a couple minutes over, so we're doing very very well. I'm, I'm very happy with how the time went today. Okay. And Terry, just so you know, it's not a Helix. It's a HX Effects. It's very similar. It's all the effects of, of Helix, uh, but it's the HX Effects unit. Okay. All right. So who do we have waiting on the winner? All right. We'll have that momentarily. And uh, thank you all for participating today. It's been an absolute pl- pleasure. It's been nice to be back for season two. We're going to be uh, bringing stellar guest after guest all season long. Um, okay. So Carlos Santon is uh, mentioning one person. I won't say the name out loud yet unless, unless that's confirmed with uh, my judges which is Frank and Nocturnal. I think we probably have a, an answer on this one. But this has been great. It's been great. I know the, the cool... Okay, there we go. Frank says 56. Okay, and... Okay, so there we go. Um, let me just get a confirmation from Nocturnal. Okay, and the winner is... She's typing it. I think they're going to confirm with Frank. Bear with us, and we're just about done. Okay, Jack Rawlinson Music. Okay, Jack Rawlinson. Okay, so we did it. Okay, thank you, everyone. I wish there was a way we could edit these things to speed them up, um, but it is what it is. It's live TV, live YouTube. So thank you. On fifty six, right on the number. That's fantastic. So we have four lucky winners of Helix Native Software licenses and one lucky winner, Jack Rollinson Music of the HX Effects. Again, contact me with your postal information, and we'll get that shipped out to you from Line Six. And let's jump back to our regular screen. Let's get rid of all this stressful chat stuff here. In one second. So, Tina, I want to thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart, everyone here uh, that are regulars on my show, plus the other people that come to see just you today. Um, thank you so much for your time. I know you are extremely busy, and it's an honor to have you here and uh, showing us what Helix can do in a way that we would have never thought of. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I'm really, really happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I'm going to say goodbye to you off the air. Everyone, thank you so very much. Uh, if you enjoyed the show today, please consider giving the thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed, I would love that as well. If, if people would like to get some uh, Helix merchandise, uh, Helix Hour merchandise and things, there will be a little commercial at the end of the video. Check that out. Broadstash.com will get you that. You guys and girls all rock, and it means a lot to spend a Sunday afternoon uh, with some really cool people talking about the things that we love, uh, which is music and how the Helix community and the Line 6 community has brought us all together. Thank you so much, everybody. We're still at 117 people watching. Uh, it's been a, a great Sunday afternoon. I'll say goodbye to you off the air. And until next time, everybody, we'll see you soon, and cheers. Hey, you're still here? Eric Jr. here, reminding you to check out our full lineup of quality merch. Available right now in the Broadstash Boutique. Quality products and fast shipping. Visit Broadstash.com today. Thank you for watching the Helix Hour. We hope you enjoyed today's presentation. An extra special thank you to the staff at Line 6 for their continued support. If you've not yet subscribed, please do so right now and feel free to share our content with your friends. See you next time on the Helix Hour.